unless you're going to sanctify yourself. The second thing they had to do, the Bible said they had to cleanse themselves. He said, make sure they wash and clean themselves. And then they had one more thing. They had to obey the command of God not to breach the boundaries of Mount Sinai. Because Mount Sinai was this great smoking mountain. However, after Moses gave them the commandment, the Bible says they traded their priesthood out of fear. I'm going somewhere with this. Exodus 20 and 18 says, and all the people, they're ready to be priests. We're ready to go up there now, Moses. It's that time. We're ready to be priests. I got a call. I got an anointment on my life now. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpets and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood up for all. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. Somebody say fear. fear. And Moses said to the people, fear not for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces and that ye sin not. And the people stood up for all and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. But God says, because you got scared, you can't be priests. You cannot be a priest. You cannot represent me uh, to the world. But, but God still wanted us to be priests. He wanted us to be a royal priest and a chosen generation. Uh, but, 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 but we needed an example that would represent us before God and God would represent us, represent us before God and represent God before us. That is why Jesus was sent to us. He preached to us. He lived before us and he died for us. And when he died, he died for us and went where we were supposed to go and, where, and so that we can be where he was. Wherever the high priest goes, he represents those that he's assigned to represent. Let me preach the word to you. That's why it's a blessing. This is why you remember about your pastor. Your pastor has to pray to go where God wants the church to go. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a messed up thing inside of, 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 of church the where you can have a successful pastor and people will hate on the pastor saying, well, he's driving this. He lives here. He has these things. If he's not taking from the church to get those things, and if he's getting the right way, you need to understand my pastor's only going where I want to go. I don't want to hear that because if he's not doing the, the, the wrong things to get that, then all he's doing is he's going where you need to be going. This is where we even be for our children. We have to be a great people of God for our kids because we're trying to represent God to our children. So therefore, if he represents us and he was assigned to represent us, therefore, if he had authority over unclean spirits, over disease, and over death, then guess what? We have authority over unclean spirits, over disease, and over death. And if he has access to the heavens and he represents us, then we have access to the heavens as well. If he has access to the Father, then we have access to the Father as well. We have all those things as long as we go through Jesus. Now, now, but the problem is we got to hold firmly to the faith that we profess. You see, if we say that we believe in the word of God, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and the transforming power of the gospel, we have to hold fast to it. I mean, we got to cling to that. There is something terribly wrong with people that profess that they know Jesus and know God and believe in his son, but, but do not stand on what they profess to be true. See, if I say it, you got to stand on it. See, your profession of faith should not just save you. It should establish you. It should be something that you cling to and that you lean on in times of turmoil. Now, get this. I'm a professor in my job. You know, we're professors in our job. So, as a professor, I profess things to be true. I will teach them a thing, right? I can profess a thing, but I have an obligation to back them up with facts. So I just can't go out there and preach what I want to preach and teach what I want to teach. I have to back them up with facts. And as a Christian, I profess that there is but one God. And there's one mediator between God and man. And that is the man, Christ Jesus. It is not up to me to prove that. It is my job to hold to that profession and square every decision and every action in my life on that truth. And the truth, and that truth alone, is what gives me strength. It gives me boldness. It gives me faith. It gives me power and courage to do what I'm called to do. There's this, this is no time to be a Christian in your heart, but a coward in your walk. Oh, I'm going to preach this day. I'm tired of people saying, I believe in God. But when it comes down to you really believing in God, do you believe in God? We have to, if we profess the thing, we got to back it up. Because I'm going to tell you, we ain't got to prove that. The Bible, that's a fact that's already been proven. Well, we prove, that we prove that God is real by how we walk. By what we do. It is time to hold fast to 
your profession or, or, or in Jesus Christ, who is your great high priest. Our great high priest is moved by what hurts us. He's moved by what goes on in our life. He's moved by what hurts us. The Bible says in, 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 in verse 15, For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. The Bible says that we don't have a high priest that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That then not only does he feel what hurts us, he sets an example for us so that we would not mistakenly think that he excuses sin. What am I trying to say? That means that Jesus went through some things too. That means the Bible says that he was hurt. He was attempted like we were tempted. He went through like we went through. And we think all the time that infirmities are only dealing with temptation. We think all the time that infirmities are only dealing with, with the fact that we have a sexual desire for something. But let me tell you something. That you must live in a natural world. And the things that we go through in the natural sometimes, they make infirmities too. Because if you've been sick for a long time and you've been praying to God, Lord, I need you to bring me out of this sickness, but God has not moved just yet. Uh, if you've been going through, you're depressed in your body, you say, Lord, I need you to move this out of my life and it's not moved yet, then guess what? Then sometimes that puts an infirmity in your heart. And what God is saying is, I am touched by what hurts you. Right. Don't let anybody tell you that God is a God that don't feel what you're going through. And I think that this is the issue sometimes that we have a problem in our lives that we think that God is never there. He does not hear me. He does not feel me. He does not feel what I'm going through. And God says, no, but I'm touched by what you're going through. When we lose people in our life, Jesus said, I lost Lazarus. And you say, well, well Jesus, you could just raise Lazarus. But the Bible says that Jesus, when he heard Lazarus was dead, the Bible says he began to weep. Am I being real? The Bible said that Jesus had people to lie on him too. People that Jesus had people to betray him too. He had people to walk out of his life too. And he said, I want you to know that I cannot, that, 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 that I, even though I'm your great high priest, I'm hurt by what you're going through. Yes. And I know that you got infirmities, but the problem I want you to understand, these infirmities do not give you the right to sin. Oh, it gets quiet in the house. Because well, sometimes we think, we say, Lord, and I want, I want to say this, and this is important to us. I want to say this, and sometimes we say, well, you know, Pastor, when things get rough in your life, we get real. All right. Don't we say it sometimes? Yeah. That we let the realness of us come out. And so then we were going to say some stuff that we should not say. We'll do some things we should not do because on the inside, there's some realness that's going on that's that, 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 that pulled out of us because of our lack of being spiritual at that time. But let me tell you something. I am really human, but I'm still really spiritual. And that whenever the, the, the human side of me, whenever the human side begins to act up, and I'm hurt in my flesh. I'm hurt in my emotions. I'm hurt in my psychological side. Even when that happens, I'm still spiritual enough to say, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. I still gotta realize that God, you were hurt in your flesh. You were hurt emotionally. You were hurt psychologically. But yet at the end of the day, you said, not my will. Yes. One of the biggest things about Christ that always gets me is the time that he spent us out of the Garden of Gethsemane. This was a very, very interesting time that he spent in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, we found out something about him. We found out about Jesus that the problem was going on that I don't want to be what I'm called to do. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I talk about that real quick? That I don't want to do what I'm called to do. Is that Bible? Yeah. Have you ever been to a situation in your life where you're like, Lord, I didn't ask to preach. Lord, I didn't ask to be that person that you're going to send me out to be. I never asked for those things. And God says, you know, you know, yeah, you didn't ask for it. He said, but, but, but you got to realize, I didn't ask to die for your sin. I didn't, I, I, didn't ask, I didn't ask for that to be the penalty. He knew that the only way we're going to be able to be saved is through his sacrifice. He said, but I knew that the only way we can, we, we can wash away sin is through the shedding of blood. I didn't want it to be that. But guess what? I knew that it was upon me to do those things. And at the end, he said, I, even though I know it takes that, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to do that. I, you know, we, we talk about being saved, and we know sometimes what it means to be saved. We know how much it hurts, how much things that we have to, to go through. But at the same time, God says, I feel what you're feeling. I know what you're going through. But he says, the main thing I'll let you understand is that you have no excuse to sin. 
And this is where, this is where we go to the last point. Is that God gives a grace that helps us. He gives a grace that helps us. He says, we come boldly to the throne of grace. Right? Now, 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 if you did any kind of research on this, if you looked at what, what all this means, then in research, you'd understand one thing, that he said it's a throne of grace. Jesus. But we also know there's another throne too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The throne of judgment. Yeah. And I said, Lord, well, what's the difference between the two? He said, there's no difference between the two. He said, judgment is always there. God does not change. There is grace and there is law. Mm -hmm. The difference is, which one are you asking for? And a lot of times, what we do, we ask for judgment for our enemies and grace for ourselves. And, and, and what I've learned is that there are some people, there are some times in our life, he said, I'm going to give you the help that you need. There are some times in our life where we, where we deserve judgment, but God says, I'm going to give you grace. Because even though you deserve judgment, you need grace. Yeah. Can I preach a word real quick? How many people do you know that were backslid one way from God? Because we could have given them grace. We could have given them grace. But we gave them judgment. How many preachers do we know that quit preaching the word of God? Because they had grace on everybody in the congregation. But when they needed grace, nobody had grace on them. I, I, I've often said that one of the scariest things, and I'm not going to holler anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up with this. I've, all, I've often said that, that we are sometimes, as people of God, we can have grace for everybody else. And what happens is our their kids' lives. Sometimes it ain't us, it's our kids. It's our loved one. But when it happens to us, people want to disqualify you for certain offices because of what your children do. And they want you to say, well, you know what? I think you need to sit down because your children are crazy. Uh -huh. And my dad was preaching one time. And he said, you know, because we were, we were all insane, acting fool. I was out there too. And he said, you know, I read about Eli, how Eli's kids were acting a fool and, and God brought judgment to their house. Yeah. And he said, I said, Lord, I want to be Eli. But then he thought about it. He said, you know what the Bible said? That Samuel was walking before God. Mm -hmm. Taught his kids right. And his kids still had the crazy. And it's interesting sometimes in the life of, 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 of people of God that is you guys, y'all all priests as well, that sometimes you guys are going to have the most uh, uh, love for somebody else's kids. The most love, most great for somebody's situation, somebody's situation. But when situations hit your life, I mean, really guys. And God began to put in my heart. He says, we need grace. And we have got to be people who give grace. I don't know why God is taking me here. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know why God is taking me here. He said, we need grace. Some stuff that I even wrote down last night. Can y'all believe? For some reason, it is not on my laptop. Had it all there. Went to go change, put it on the other, send it to me. For some reason, half the sermon is cut off. I bet they can get it from Calvin. My cousin, I know it's on that computer. Maybe it's not for me to say that. The whole thing, I had to send it from that computer to that computer. For all to the email. But it was all cut off. And maybe God wanted me to go a different way. That's never happened before. <laughs> never happened. Everything. And this is the one of the worst dreams you can have in the past, too. That you get to them notes and not where you want them to be. But maybe. God wants well, us to talk about grace. grace. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And do we give it to each other? Yeah. In Sunday school, we were talking about Kanye West. I'm going to give me five minutes and I'm out of here. We are talking about Kanye West. And, and I said one of the worst things about Kanye West is the fact that he's dealing with salvation in front of everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you know when you got saved, mm -hmm. yeah. nobody knew what was going on inside your head. Yeah. Nobody knew what you struggled with. Because some of y'all say we believe in God, but it's a lot of stuff you don't believe in right now. Yeah. A lot of stuff you got a problem with right now. And the problem is that now we get to nitpick his Christianity. 
We get to say, well, you don't believe this, so you ain't saved. You're not doing this, so you ain't saved. And you're not going there, and you don't do this this way, so you ain't saved. And God says, well, we're giving him judgment. When we could be giving him grace. Because the only way he's going to grow is through I begin to even think about myself. You know, sometimes we have children. And I said, Lord, sometimes I give judgment. I said, God says, but how many times do you give grace? Yeah. Because what we want that for, we want everyone to walk this line. Yeah. Yes. That we don't walk ourselves. Yeah. We want everybody to do everything right. And I've been in church sometimes. I forget to call somebody and people get mad. Yeah. If I forget to pat you on the back, people get mad at me. And, and, and then they, 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 they say, well, you got to, you forgot about me and all this stuff. And at the same time, but when they get behind here, what 